Hey everyone, it's Rihanna and welcome back to another video. Today I have another Morbid Reviews for you guys. Unfortunately, it is not requested reviews. Again, I am so, so sorry. My deepest apologies for not doing those requested reviews earlier. I have literally just finished university, so I haven't had time to watch specific films and all of that jazz. Okay, let's get on with the reviews. So the first film I want to review for you guys is Cinema Paradiso, which is an Italian film which came out in 1988, and a film I have been meaning to watch forever. So Cinema Paradiso is set in the 1950s in Sicily and follows a little boy called Toto as he befriends this man called Alfredo, who is the projectionist in the Cinema Paradiso. And honestly, a film hasn't affected me in so long than so of Cinema Paradiso. This film gave me so many emotions, it had me smiling from ear to ear at some scenes and crying at other scenes. It's just the way that this film portrays this relationship between this little boy Toto and Alfredo, it's just so beautiful and so just raw and real. You're watching these two people on screen and it's not like you're even watching actors, it's like you're watching two people join a friendship and this little boy grow up and it's just so, so well done. It's really simplistic but effective because it was just so emotional, either happy emotion or sad emotion, and I think this film was perfectly designed for cinephiles like me because the scenes they have in the cinema where people are just like laughing and joking and really taking in the film and little Toto's fascination with the projector and how films work and how his imagination works is just so perfectly fitted to cinephiles because that's how I feel when I watch films. And just seeing the atmosphere of this little Sicily town and how people use film as an escape and as their only main source of entertainment and how this cinema paradiso is this kind of safe place that people go and the community kind of comes together, it's just such a beautiful way to put it on film and it's really hard for me to express this in words how much I loved Cinema Paradiso. It's so beautiful, the dialogue is beautiful, the story is beautiful, it's simple but effective and it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea but if you're just deeply in love with films like I am you have to see Cinema Paradiso and it's really rare that I give films a five star rating but I obviously had to give Cinema Paradiso a five out of five stars because it's looking to be one of my favourite films of all time now. It's just affected me so deeply. Another film that affected me very emotionally is Me Before You, which is the new dramatic romance movie starring Amelia Clarke and Sam Claflin. And it tells the story of Lou who lives in a small town and she's just been let go of her job but she needs another one to keep her family going. And she finds a job when she sees an advertisement for a full-time carer for Will Trainer, who has recently been in a motorbike accident, leaving him paralysed from the shoulders down. Now, Amelia Amelia Clark plays Lou so, so well. She has perfect comedic timing. She is so lively. She is this massive ball of energy and she's this character you will not get bored with in this film. Even in the emotional scenes, you are just hooked on Amelia Clark. It's so funny thinking she is also the badass mother of dragons. She has so much range. At the beginning of the film, Lou and Will don't have the greatest of friendships. Will just really wants to be left alone because he is in very much denial of what's happened to him and he misses his old life and his old friends. But with any romance movie, they start to like each other and start to fall in love and it is just really, really beautiful. It's an incredibly clever and witty film as well it's an incredibly charming and funny film. I was laughing from ear to ear and had tears in my eyes from laughter from this film. It uses comedy in the smartest way possible in its favour. Me Before You isn't a perfect film. It does have some very questionable and cheesy dialogue, but I happen to really like cheesy dialogue. And there are some parts in the particularly emotional scenes in this film that had questionable shots and I don't think it suited the mood too well. It didn't really showcase what they were trying to say with the shots in this film matched with the scene and with the dialogue. Me Before You is definitely not going to be everyone's cup of tea. It's no Brooklyn, it's no The Notebook, but it's somewhere in between with its charming funniness and with its emotional storyline and great characters. As I said, not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I gave Me Before You a 3.5 stars out of 5. The next one I want to talk about is What We Do in the Shadows, which is actually our number one pick for Cinebrew this month in underrated comedies. And if you haven't checked out Cinebrew yet, I will leave the link down below. It's a Facebook group where basically we choose two movies a month and we review them and then at the end of the month we have a live show hangout and discuss them with amazing people. Anyway, What We Do in the Shadows is a vampire mockumentary. It's set in New Zealand and bases itself around four vampires who live together in this flat. And it's absolutely just genius. The way that the dynamics of these vampires work is so, so great. It's just like normal flatmates, like they have normal problems like cleaning the dishes 
and turning humans into vampires, I guess that's not a normal condition. I don't know, maybe it is. But yeah, they have normal problems like normal housemates have and the way they use it is just really, really great. I absolutely love the way they use the comedy in this film. It did get a bit repetitive and tiresome at some times, but I just think it's very genius and hilarious and it's such a quotable film. These four vampires live these four vampires live these four vampires live together and have their own little characteristic and there's a lot of history behind their characters as well. As vampires they have lived through many centuries and it's hilarious trying to watch them try to operate a computer. But when a new vampire comes into the mix, things start to change. And we see different sorts of mythical creatures like werewolves and witches and everything. And it's just so great because it's set in a normal setting. And for a mockumentary, it's done so perfectly. And for What We Do In The Shadows, I gave a 4.5 out of five stars. Really enjoyed this one, still quoting it in my head. Up next is quite a new release, and that is Green Room, directed by Jeremy Sonnier, which is his newest film. I thought I'd watch Blue Ruin and then watch Green Room, and Green Room is madness. I didn't have time to do a full review on it, unfortunately, but I'm just gonna give you some quick thoughts now. So Green Room follows a struggling punk band who are at the lowest of their low. They're in desperation of a gig, so they take one at a neo-Nazi club. And when one of the members, Pat, witnesses a crime, they get into all of this madness. It's hard to describe this film without spoilers, but it's a very, very gory film and just pure madness. Green Room was probably one of the best cinema experiences I've had in a long time because people were gasping, people were looking away from the screen because this film doesn't hold back when it comes to the violence and the gore. Green Room has quite a large amount of characters and I would definitely say the standout performances were from Imogen Poots who plays this girl who's already in the club and her friend gets into all of this business as well and also Anton Yelchin as Pat was a standout performance although his character was very on off for me the comedy in his character didn't quite work for me considering the tone of the film was really really dark and the number one stand-up performance of this film was hands down Patrick Stewart as the villain. I have never seen Patrick Stewart in this light and I would t be terrified if I ever ran into him in the street. His performance was just so scary and raw and I'm just terrified of Patrick Stewart now. Jeremy Sunye does something so great with this genre. He flips it on his head but he uses it to his advantage and I think it's super, super clever. It's all in this very confined space of just this one gig hall where you don't know what's around the corner, you don't know what's gonna happen next and it's really not a predictable film at all. I mean, you can really see where some of the characters are going and you see who's gonna like, you know, be the last one standing, but when it comes to the violence and the gore, you don't see that that coming from a mile away. And I really think it was a genius way to do this film. Green Room is a perfect nail biter of a film. I think it would be perfect to watch with a group of friends. It wasn't perfect overall as a film to me. I didn't enjoy it as much as I hoped I would have enjoyed it. It's not really my type of film, but I think what Jeremy Sanyue did with this film, with this genre, really kind of turned my opinion around. The film's a bit predictable and some of the characters just didn't work for me and some of the tonal shifts didn't work for me either, especially with the dialogue in this film, which is why I only gave Green Room a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The last film I want to talk to you guys about is The Invitation, which is a film I'd heard loads about on YouTube and in the film community in general. And it's based around a couple called Will and Kira. Will is the main character, played by Logan Marshall Green, who are invited to a dinner party by Will's ex-wife and her new boyfriend who is played by Michelle Hausman. It sounds very complicated but it really isn't. This couple go to a dinner party with a bunch of adults and things start to get very suspicious and weird. And so the character of Will played by Logan Marshall Green is already suffering a lot of PTSD I believe he has from his son's death and from his marriage and everything to this woman that is now in a new relationship that has invited him to the dinner party and being in his old house again brings back a lot of memories and he's very very suspicious over David, who is her new partner. And the film's build-up is really, really intense. Let's just say intense. I think the kind of first hour, it's not too great. But when it comes to the last half an hour in this film, the build-up in the first hour feels so great when you get to the last half an hour. I think as a whole, the characters get very, very suspicious about this whole dinner party and why they're there and this invitation ideal that this couple have. I don't really want to spoil anything for you guys, but it's very, very strange and very just 
intimate, I guess. So by the end of the film, you're really, really creeped out, and the last 30 minutes of this film are worth the hour build-up, trust me. Logan Marshall Green as Will does a really great job of showing this character's mindset, and I think the film showcases that really well as well. You really see what he's been through, and you can understand why he's very suspicious of the couple now. And Eden, who is his ex-wife, she is a very different person from what he already knew her to be, and I think the actress who plays her did a great job there as well. I can't really say anything else other than that, because I don't want to spoil the film for you, but honestly the last half an hour of this film, so satisfying, and the last minute slash 30 seconds I think is genius. It's probably one of the best endings in a film I've seen in a while. I think the first hour of this film had a lot more potential to be as good as the last 30 minutes and build up slower, and just be a little more clever in its dialogue and its pacing as well, because with the characters and with Will's character and the PTSD and all of the memories coming back, it can get very repetitive and slow paced and boring at times. If you're into horror thrillers, I would say the last half an hour of The Invitation will really be worth your time, but I unfortunately only gave The Invitation a 3.5 out of 5 stars, which is still a great score, but it had a lot more potential to be great. So there you have it guys, that was another more movie reviews. If you've seen any of the films I've mentioned, please let me know what you thought of them down below in the comments. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting lots more TV reviews and movie reviews for you guys on very, very soon. All my social media links, including my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Letterbox, will be down below in the description. Come follow me. And as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. That is all I have for you today. Bye!